Hi, it's Kiffin Lebates here, and a number of people have asked me to make a video about the Zen cryptocurrency. Because over the last week or so, a large proportion of the block space on Ethereum has been occupied by transactions relating to this token. And the first thing to say is, it is a token. It's an ERC20 token that has been uh, deployed on the Ethereum blockchain. But there are a few interesting things about it, so I think it is worth making a video on it. And I spent this morning looking through the contract. I even cloned the repo and looked at some of the tests and fiddled with some of them to see how it worked. And I performed a cursory inspection on the code to check that the founders claims that it is an immutable freestanding contract with no admins and no backdoors is actually true. And on the surface, it looks like that is the case. And I suspect that it truly is the case, but I'm not a professional auditor and I only spent a couple of hours on this. So don't take my word for it, but the initial signs are good. Uh, the second thing is that the project is founded by people who are doxxed, so we know who they are. The main person behind it is a guy called Jack Levin, who uh, appears to be an early Google employee. And there are pictures of him with uh, Bryn and Paige. I don't think they look photoshopped. So again, it looks like it's all out in the open. Nothing is being concealed. But of course, this is the real world. You never know. You can never be 100% sure. However, again, I would say it's pretty likely that this is all true. So why am I going on about an ERC-20 token? That's nothing new, surely other than the fact that this one seems to be getting a lot of interest in the cryptocurrency space. Well, I think the thing to do is to look at what most ERC-20 tokens are currently like. Some project founders have some great idea for a play-to-earn game or a DeFi protocol or something like that, and they issue a token for that project, and they get some investors to give them money, and they pre-mint a large proportion of those tokens and award them to themselves and the investors with a small amount left for public investing. That's not the case with Zen. Uh, Zen has no pre-mint. Zen has no preferential treatment for anybody other than based on how early you get in. So, of course, people who are keeping an eye on scams, that does set off some alarm bells, but the whole stuff does appear to be above board. The token has no purpose other than being a token in the same way that Bitcoin is, i.e. it's a record of who has how much and you can hold them or transfer them on to other people. And because it's on Ethereum, other people can go and write smart contracts that accept Zen for some other purpose. So I'm guessing at some point in the future we'll start seeing some of those if the project is successful. But its fundamental aim appears to be to be a Bitcoin-like token on the Ethereum chain with a rather interesting distribution mechanism. And I think that's the thing I should go into next. So the token isn't capped in the way that Bitcoin is. There can only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. Theoretically, there can be um, a number approaching infinity for Zen, but the distribution is logarithmic. So every time more tokens are distributed, the amount that can be distributed next time drops off dramatically and therefore, for all practical intents and purposes, it kind of does has, have a cap. It's not, well, as I said, theoretically it doesn't, in practice it does. That's probably the best way to summarize it up. Um, so mathematicians will say, yes, there can be an, effectively an infinite amount, but you and I will go, well, there will come a point where it would take so long and people would have to spend so much ether minting the next lot that it's just not going to happen. So it kind of does have a cap. <laughs> I haven't been the clearest there, have I? Um, however, anybody can come along and mint a few more. And the people who came along early got to, or rather will get to, because that's an interesting thing, mint the most. Because you don't go to the contract and mint Zen tokens. You go to the contract and you claim the right to mint tokens at some point in the future. And the earlier you come along, the more you are allowed to mint at that time in the future. And the further off in the distance you set that minting time, the more you can mint as well. So it's kind of a product of how early are you times 
how long are you willing to wait in order to get your hands on them? And you can say, I want to mint them in a few days, or you can say that you want to mint them a year or so in the future. There is a minimum term, I think it's two days, and there is a maximum waiting term, which um, is dynamic. But again, I think it works out at about a year and a bit. So this is what the project founders call proof of participation. I think that's a misnomer because it makes it sound like there's something to do with the consensus system. And there is no consensus system in the contract. It's all based on Ethereum. It relies on the Ethereum validators to validate transactions. So it's piggybacking nicely on Ethereum. And that's kind of the whole point of Ethereum. All the Zen contract really does is present a new method for distributing stuff. And this has always been a problem in economics. How do you get cash into the hands of the masses? And Satoshi's solution was to allow miners to create the Bitcoins over time. It was an interesting distribution solution. It did have a problem that people who joined up early ended up with much, much larger amounts than people who came along later. And you can say, well, that's tough. That's life, right? If you come along uh, in the early days of Google and buy some Google stock, well, then later on, you'll be very, very rich. If you find out about it later, tough luck. It's the same with mining gold. If you happen to hit the mother load, you become rich. If you're one of the Johnny come latelys, then you only get to pick up the scraps or find nothing at all. So, uh, Interesting distribution mechanism. I tried it out, set a few for a couple of days, a few for a year in the future, and then was very careful to enter in my calendar an alert to remind me in 365 days time to go and actually use my right to mint the tokens. Um, and if I remember in a year's time, then I should be able to claim um, a couple of million, I think it worked out at. But that means you have to be very careful. Now, fortunately, the claiming transaction, um, when I was uh, executing it, only cost three or four dollars because the gas price was reasonable. I happened to be lucky enough to be doing stuff in Finland, which is in a time zone that seems to be out of the main busy time zones. So uh, there, there's something for you. If you're going to join in with this, you need to set yourself an alar alarm or alert because if you don't mint your tokens after the period of time, the amount of tokens you can mint drops off every day until after 10 days or so, if I remember correctly, you can't claim anything. So, uh, so far so good. It's interesting. That part doesn't look like a scam to me. It, it's just hoping to replicate what uh, Bitcoin managed to achieve in a quicker way with a distribution mechanism that doesn't involve computer hardware where churning away and burning energy. And uh, as I said, piggybacking on the Ethereum system for all the consensus stuff and making sure that there's one true view of the world. So as I said, bit of a misnomer calling it proof of participation. It's just a distribution system based on your participation. Um, there is another thing in the contract which is staking and generally speaking I'm pretty negative about staking because it's usually a red flag that there are Ponzi scheme like aspects to the project. Getting people to lock up their tokens in order to magically have their number increase uh, in most projects is just a, an artificial way to get the tokens out of circulation thereby inflating the price of the rest of the tokens. Now the staking in Zen is a bit different in that the APR is fixed at 20% to begin with, but it declines over time and eventually settles at a very low 2%. So the early day amount is um, going to encourage people to stake. By the time we get to the 2%, it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. And interestingly enough, the coins that are returned as your yield from your staking are just minted by the contract itself. So there's another example of why it isn't truly capped in that if everybody put all the tokens that they'd minted in the staking contract, the supply would go up by 2% every year. But again, it's not going to go shooting off to uh, a huge number anytime soon. So uh, again, I'm in two minds about the staking side of things. Is it does it make it more Ponzi-like or is there a real purpose for it? And I mean, I guess the idea again is to pull some of the early coins out of circulation to prevent 
an early crash um, rather than people wanting to cash in immediately when they get their hands on their tokens because they put a, uh, a claiming term of two or three or four days and then got some. Uh, it doesn't look like it initially worked because the price shot up to a uh, dollar and is now hovering around the pennies. Um, however, maybe that's just an early speed bump um, that got hit in the uh, tokenomics of the system and now it'll settle down to something more sensible. I guess time will show us. So I guess the final question is, well, should you participate? Well, that's a tricky one. It's like saying, should you have participated in Bitcoin? Yes, in hindsight, you should have. Should you have participated in some other random uh, coin that has appeared on the um, radar since? Well, in 99% of cases, the answer there is, unless you're one of the pump and dumpers at the beginning, probably not, because <clears throat> most of them are now pretty much worthless and probably won't actually ever be worth something. There'll be a whole new a lot of uh, tokens coming along the next time we have a, uh, a bull market and uh, the old ones some of them may take off most of them won't so uh, I'm not giving any investment advice um, just remember the usual things do your research check yourself that the uh, contract is okay um, look at the amount that you're going to put into it which at the moment looks pretty low it's only a few dollars so uh, maybe some of you go well why not um, we can't fully know the risks until over time. Who knows how secure the contract is? It could all come tumbling down for all sorts of reasons. On the other hand, maybe it'll, uh, it will take off. Maybe it'll become the new Bitcoin for the Ethereum ecosystem. I don't know. I guess I'm coming across like the elves in uh, Lord of the Rings here. You know, the, where they comment is, do not go to the elves for advice because they will say both yes and no. Um, I guess I'm gonna finish off with uh, I don't know. It's an interesting distribution system. It looks new compared to the other ones I've seen out there. It does seem to be less uh, greedy than most of the ERC20 tokens out there. On the other hand, the token has no real purpose other than being a unit of accounting um, and possibly in the future a store of value. So uh, I guess I'm going to wrap it up there. That's Zen. Um, it's certainly been a fascinating morning to spend looking at it, but uh, as is usually the case with crypto, I'm left with the bemused feeling of if only I could predict how people are going to behave en masse, because ultimately that's really going to be the indicator of success. If everybody jumps on board it and it doesn't have any flaws, then it could well be worth something. If uh, it's just a flash in the pan um, craze at the moment and everybody forgets about it in a couple of weeks time, then it's going to have been a waste of your money. So uh, that's it for today. I'll uh, probably have a follow-up on this in a month's time when the dust is settled and we can have a better view of what's going on. But I hope this description has been useful and has given you enough information to go off and do your own research and decide whether or not you think this is something worth paying attention to or not. Bye for now.